The Slasher. It may be your run-of-the-mill average necromorph, but it doesn't make it any less horrifying to look at. Why do slashers look and behave the way they do? Let's cut through the details like they cut through arms and legs and find out. Welcome back guys. So I ran a poll on if anyone would like to see my first four videos re-uploaded as I think back then I had zero clue how to actually structure a video or write a script for one and I got a pretty positive response on it so I figured I would get cracking on that. I'm not saying my videos are perfect right now but there's considerably less eye bleeding and a sense of nails on the chalkboard to be sure. If this is your first time finding one of my videos or watching then please subscribe. I've got more coming out all the time and hey free entertainment right? All you gotta do is push that button on the bottom right. Go ahead. It's red and it contrasts with everything else. It's perfect. Anyways, let's get to it y'all. To quote, the slashers are one of the common necromorphs you encounter, and you will face them throughout the entire game. In the Dead Space universe, when a human is killed or infected, typically they will become a slasher. A slasher has elongated arms adorned with blades made out of repurposed bone, and they also possess talons. In the middle of their chest and abdomen area are two more hands that have sprouted out allowing the slasher to grab onto potential prey while it tries to stab you in the neck. But before we get too deep into the morphology of this human turned monster, let's discuss their typical overview. And get ready because there are like 10 more variants of slashers, did you know that? Cause I didn't, so don't worry you're in fairly good company. Let's get to it. The slasher is composed of a single human corpse. They are more commonly encountered in the game than others and will badger Isaac from the first 10 minutes of Dead Space 1 all the way to the last few minutes of Dead Space 3. They have specialized arms which contain large blades of repurposed bone that has been twisted and remolded to fit the offensive capabilities of the slasher. The arms can be either the original arms of the human with the blades ripping through the hands and the shoulder joints broken so that the arms are held above the head, or the arms of the human have become essentially completely vestigial and new arms have emerged from the back of the shoulder blades. The new arms appear sinewy and also have quite a bit of exposed muscle. They still function as as normal arms would and possess blades in which to strike victims. Either way, these are going to be the main weapons used by the slasher when converting the human population into the necromorph population, but their secondary purpose is to also stabilize the creature when it moves. These blades combined with the raw power the slashers have give it the ability to completely dismantle a human being piece by piece. Some slashers along with their bladed appendages also have a lower set of arms around the lower rib cage and abdomen area. Interesting Interesting that these arms would form on the torso as opposed to other areas, but perhaps when the marker repurposes human DNA, some of the traits still push through with this organism. If they aren't newly formed arms, then it appears as though it can be the host's original arms clamped down to the sides of the body, while still other arms may actually be spindly vestigial limbs that poke out from the exposed abdominal cavity. These limbs can be used to maintain stability of the slasher if, say, it were to lose its lower extremities, but still needed to attack a human. The arms will push it off the ground as its main arms will then slash at the enemy. These vestigial arms aren't so useless though, as they can also hold a human while they begin stabbing you profusely in the shoulder blade and then probably in your neck. The bones of the feet are fused and lengthened while the heel bone is extended almost parallel to the angle of the sole, forming a sharp peg that aids in balance. This modified foot seems to aid the slasher in crawling through vents. Its main drawback, however, is that just like walking in high heels, I imagine because I've never done it, it gives the slasher a strange gait that requires a counterbalance. It will typically use its claws as this counterbalance, but it makes it much slower at walking. The face is severely twisted. There are typically two types of slasher heads and face. The first is just your average horrifying face. It looks like the mouth has been ripped open and there may or may not be a lower jaw present anymore. The face is stuck in a permanent screaming position or anger. It just looks really gross. Ugh. The second type of skull structure possesses two large bone protrusions. These jut out and appear much like a leaper's type of skull where you've got these two bones at the bottom that have replaced the lower jaw. So it appears probably just like the leaper, an entire head can fit in it. 
perhaps used to remove the actual head of the victim from the body, speeding up the necromorph process. The overall strength of the Slasher is much more than that of an average human, and the reason for this is if you've watched any of my other videos, I explained that the human body actually has a massive amount of strength that our brains do not allow us to tap into because we could actually injure ourselves. Look at your fingers for a second. You could actually bite your fingers off like carrot sticks, but your brain's like, no bro, don't do that. So yeah, that's why we don't do it just because our brain says not to. So anyways, we will call it about one third of our actual potential is used in a day-to-day -day process. A lot of times, even with adrenaline output, we still don't necessarily tap into all the strength we have, but it's a considerable amount more. The necromorph has little need for self-preservation. They serve the marker. They don't serve their biological functions like we must. So, their slasher form utilizes its strength at 100%. This increase in strength makes them devastating to fight, as in hand-to-hand, -hand, one -on one-on-one combat. If you are working with less offensive capabilities and less strength, which you are because you're an average human, you're probably not going to fare so well. So now we come to the actual reason I wanted to re-upload. There are many different variants of slashers out there, and I intend to run through most of them. Some of them get a little redundant. There's a lot of info on these guys, so get comfortable. Let's start with the basic slasher, the naked slasher. These are the most frequent encountered in the game. They are also the most grotesque in my opinion. They have lost all their clothes as to be expected, which shows you the true horrors that this person has become. Their abdomen is ripped open, exposing mutilated intestines. Two arms jut out at this point and are used for grabbing and stabilizing. Their skin is cut and scarred very badly. So badly that in some areas you can actually see exposed muscle. Their face is stuck in a fixed position and the neck is elongated in a slouching posture. The female civilian slasher is seen in Dead Space 2 after Titan Station begins to have a necromorph outbreak. They actually look relatively female still and have a complete lack of abdominal limbs. The blades always sprout from the host's original arms and some will possess lumps and flays on their faces. Different than most other slashers, female slashers are able to spit corrosive acid on foes that will slow them down, allowing them to get in close and attack. The flight crew slasher, which apparently were all female and, you know, like the average female slasher, they retain all their clothing as well. The torso has been slightly twisted to the left side either due to transformation process or because the victim was severely injured prior to death. More than likely, a broken spine would be the culprit. The teeth have been replaced by a large, sharp, bony protrusion. The right arm appears to have been cracked with the ulna bone poking out of the skin completely. The neck has also been majorly injured with exposed muscle hanging from the neck and the head seems to have been pulled further forward. I probably should put a warning gore on this because <laughs> this is pretty uh, in depth. Anyways, the back leg has been twisted at the knee, also indicating a broken leg in the process. The face is stuck in an angry pose and the eyes glow dimly. Luckily though, her hair is all accounted for. She, just like any civilian slasher, is able to shoot acid balls that deal great damage. Any civilian slasher that's female, that is. The enhanced slasher is characterized by its molted black and green tissue, glowing eyes, and the presence of maggots infesting their bodies. Yummy. But really, their main characteristic is the sturdiness in combat. They are more resilient to damage from weapons and blows. In Dead Space 1, the enhanced version possesses skinnier looking slasher blades, but still just as deadly. In Dead Space 2, they are replaced by much bulkier looking necromorphs that appear black and green. Their ferocity in combat is elevated as they will dead sprint towards humans and begin slashing unlike the normal slashers which will typically walk towards their intended victims and use stealth. Unitologist slashers appear almost beefier than regular slashers. They still possess their cleric robes and uniforms but the main difference is that they look less altered than the other forms. Most of them appear to be intact with the blades jutting out of the back of their previous human form. The arms are frozen more than likely by rigor more in the unitologist prayer gesture. These arms in game cannot be removed or dismembered. Now we get to the uh, more annoying slasher in my opinion. The armored slasher appears to have either been miners or engineers wearing armored rigs. They are quite skeletal in appearance. Their muscles, skin, organs, pretty much everything that made them human is missing from their torso. The armored trousers and boots of the corpse's rig are almost completely unaltered, perhaps due to the strength of the armor. Arms have grown from their abdominal regions to hold humans. The only way to really kill these guys is to cause enough damage to the torso or cut off the head entirely. The Twisted Slasher is a strange one to say the least. Their body has been twisted grotesquely 
possibly pre-mortem, but more than likely during the transformation process, as I can't really imagine what would have done this to them. This has caused their ribs to rupture through the torso. The hands have also twisted with strangely two blades coming from the sides of the arms. The right leg has also been bent backwards and the mouth has been torn apart. Also interestingly, the slasher has intact tissue up top with some blood spots, but the lower part of the body is almost completely devoid of any skin or tissue. The frozen variant appears to almost be the most most intact. The legs are obviously broken and the left leg has been apparently pushed into the pelvis creating a crease in the leg. The arms appear to be part of the blade rather than the structural support for it. The head is mostly intact with the jaw left and most of the skin is intact for this particular slasher. The scaf slashers are mummified. They are now desiccated and green looking. In space these slashers move as though they haven't moved in about 200 years with some apparent shakiness. Waking them from their hibernation will cause them to jump down down and, like I said, shakily get up after you. The scaf slashers on the planet, however, are covered in snow and typically burrow through the ground and ambush any human walking in the area. They are going to have their snow coats pulled over their face, so all you can really see is a mouth. The last variant is surprisingly, just as a little, uh, if nobody played the DLC from Dead Space 3, is Norton. Obviously, this isn't an actual variant, but it's just an individual, so spoiler alert, just so you guys know, even though the game's been out for a while. After you shoot Norton in the face and get your woman back, you bring down the moon and then subsequently lose your woman again. However, in the DLC, when you fall back to the planet, you wake up and later on you see Norton standing in place, shaking from the cold. When you approach him, the hallucination ends and Norton is revealed to have been turned into a slasher. So, double tap, have fun killing him again, I suppose. So, the last part we're gonna go over is, if a slasher grabs you, what happens? Well, it appears that if you don't want to tap the button, or you just have morbid curiosity, the slasher will begin slashing at your shoulder, stabbing Isaac repeatedly in the left shoulder, I believe. So, after a little while, it finally corrects its position, and then will stab you in the neck. Now, when it stabs you in the neck, this obviously would puncture your esophagus and trachea, cutting off any ability for you to get air. It would probably also nick the jugular and carotid artery, and and you would bleed out in a matter of seconds. So not a pleasant way to go, but hey man, it's quicker than how the hunter kills you, I suppose. <laughs> All right guys, there you have it. I did skip a few variants because it would just become a little redundant and it would probably actually become uninteresting. So this was kind of a test video. Would you like me to make some more videos, uh, the re-uploaded videos that go over the Leaper, Puker, and Stalker? Or would you just kind of want me to end the re-uploads here? Let me know down in the comments. Also, let me ask y'all, what enemy type or lore would you like to to see from Gears of War. I was thinking maybe lore on the Lancer, like whose idea was it to put a freaking chainsaw on a weapon? I mean, that's pretty metal. So let me know in the comments as well. Please like and subscribe as well as hit that bell thing. Thanks for watching guys, and I hope you enjoyed, and as always, I will catch y'all in the next one. <laughs>